us pray ourselves in. I invite you to get into whatever your comfortable prayer position is. I like to get both my feet on the floor to feel fully grounded. Allows me to sit a little taller and just fully express the truth of my being and find that place of gratitude saying, thank you, God. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this time with all these other wonderful expressions of you, God. Thank you. Thank you for this moment. Thank you for this place. Thank you for alternative ways of cooling this place. When one unit doesn't work, there are other ways to make it happen. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We call it well in advance, and so it is, and amen. All right, so I'm going to invite Amy and Tal up and invite you all to stand, if you will, and sing along uh, as we do our call to worship song, as we affirm that God is everywhere. Okay, guys, you're going to have to help me figure out what key this thing was in. So, uh, Let's see that first line of lyrics there so I can get used to this thing again. I see joy, I see peace. Yeah. I see goodness surrounding me. I see love in every breath I breathe. I see God in everything. I see happiness. I see freedom. I see the beauty that lives in me. I see perfection in what life brings. I see God in everything. I feel joy. I never know when something more is coming. Sorry, guys. Today it was in the key of G, just so you, you guys remember. Today is sponsored by the key of G. Thank you, Tal and Amy. Good morning. Uh, my name is Maria, and I'll be your worship assistant today. Welcome home to Unity in Greensboro. I'm going to ask you to take a look at a neighbor, make some eye contact, and repeat after me. <laughs> Good, morning. Good morning. I love you this morning. And I sure do appreciate you being here. <laughs> into our virtual family watching us from home or sometime later uh, from a recording. Please know that we're saying this to you as well. And we invite you to help us grow this loving spiritual community by liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing to all of our pages. And if those of you in here have not done all that, then I'm inviting you to do that too. <laughs> we invite everyone that's watching from home to do it, but we need to be doing it too. grow this loving community. Uh, join me in reading our affirmations for September. Together, I celebrate my God-given ability to organize, balance, 
sequence and adjust to life's flow. Order is present in my world. My prayer is focused on positive outcomes for my life, world, and affairs. I believe it, and so it is. And then we'll read the uh, vision and mission statement together in the core values. Together. We envision a spiritually awakened world where all people live in joyful gratitude. Unity in Greensboro is a beacon of light for those seeking a positive path for spiritual living through prayer and meditation, education, celebration, and service. Our core values are spiritual growth, generosity, inclusivity, authenticity, wholeness, and unity. Hence the name of the church. <laughs> um, and now I have the great pleasure of welcoming uh, Amy Weaver and Tal Cruz, who we've already heard a little ditty from this morning. Amy uh, Weaver and Tal Cruz are a brother and sister duo raised in a musical family. Their love for singing together developed in the church, and over time they began exploring new genres and writing songs of their own, which I'm hoping we get to hear today maybe. Uh, they believe music is a powerful medium through which spirit can be expressed and healing and transformation can take place. Well, there's no Amy this morning on this one. <laughs> Unfortunately for you guys. So I ran across this song. I've heard a few people uh, you know, sing this song, and I just uh, realized as I was practicing it yesterday, it's from a musical, Urban Myths. Anybody know of that? No? Okay. Well, it must be an urban myth. So, um, but it's called Grateful, and it just has always struck me as something that really speaks to you know, how I feel. You know, I don't always feel grateful, but I always want to feel grateful. You know? It's like when you're there, you know like this is where you want to come back to kind of thing. So... This song kind of has a lot of that in there, so. see 
But on the road to a promised land This hand will shepherd me Through delight and despair Holding tight and always there Grateful Kind of just want to keep that spirit. Oh, grateful. Mm, yes. So today I am serving as your prayer chaplain and like, would like to let you know that no matter what you may be growing through, our prayer chaplains want to pray with you about it and support you. So seek one of us out today after the service. I'm here. That lady there is here whose name just, Anita. It's like, dang, how can that happen to me? I know. It's like, blank. <laughs> so, to be included in our prayer list, you can fill out a form and put it in the prayer box that Nana, I do remember her name, <laughs> Nana just brought up, before or after the service. Or you can click on the prayer request button on our website. So, let me just take a deep breath and remind myself and all of you that prayer does what? Works. Prayer works. Okay, so let's pray together now. I invite you to think of someone or some situation that you'd like to send some love to as we pray together. We have received specific prayer requests for the following people. So let us hold each of these people and their situations as well as the ones in our prayer box and your own special request in our hearts as we lift up their circumstances. Joan Clapp. Sarah Henning. 
Carol Velez. Ava Mitchell. Dylan Rolo. Susie Garcia. Patricia McGregor. Robin Satterfield. The Jim Sukup family. Judith Cohen. And all the names in your heart. Let us affirm together that these loved ones are whole, perfect, and complete. When others find themselves facing what seem like insurmountable challenges to them, we place our attention beyond what seems wrong. Instead, we align our thinking with the divine truth that underlies all things. We stand with them knowing that God is already working in partnership with each person to grow through the appearance of challenges. So let us pause now, taking in a deep breath, a deep cleansing breath, and get quiet. In this quietness, we can feel the activity of God streaming through our minds and hearts. We feel our hearts overflowing with that healing stream that is God in us. As our hearts align with one another, we create a powerful energetic force for good. And we send that healing energy forth to bless and magnify the good in every living soul. So let us just send that forth now in quiet as we take a moment in silence. We bless our world and rest in the joyful knowing that each is being blessed. For wherever we are, God is and all is well. And so it is. Amen. Why are they coming up? This is not what we normally do.
Hello, everybody. So uh, we're going to start off with a song as part of today's lesson. Today's lesson is uh, along the same, uh, well, it's using the exact same title of, of this year's World Day of Prayer, The Heart of Healing. And when we look at healing, we're talking about prayer work. And uh, when I was preparing some of the earlier stuff before uh, Unity licensed me this past year, there was a question that was like, uh, you know, what's the purpose of, qu of prayer? And, and their answer to that was, um, to change my mind. And I thought, oh no, there's tons of other reasons to have prayer, like uh, world peace. Well, that means that I think that there's not world peace. So I need to change my mind about where I can see peace. That I, all, right? So anything, like come up with your own examples. Well, I, I, I want to be well. That means that you're acknowledging the, something about you that's not well. So you want to change your mind there. You want to see what it is. You want to call upon the change and acknowledge that the change is happening here first. That, and that may not mean that suddenly it's like, well, I went into prayer. When I came out, I didn't have a cold anymore, right? Um, is this suddenly I had no sinus issues, right? But it means that in the, by the time you come out of it, you took away the power of it ruining your day. Right, you took away the power of I just can't do anything because yet yeah, you can do a lot, right? And so it's about claiming that change for yourself. So as we go into the song, this is true really of all music in church, but I especially want to point it out here. We're not about to do something for the purposes of entertaining you. We are doing something inviting you to call upon the change and to allow yourself to feel this. And you're all going to have your own individual responses. Some will be similar to others. But this is about you, uh, like, allowing it. You know, I've made jokes before that I, uh, I never saw anyone fall out until I went to church in Los Angeles and I was in a predominantly black church. And, and, and it's more prominent in some of those churches, but what's happening in that moment is a release of concern of anything other than recognizing the spirit within and how it's going about, right? So um, I invite you to sit if that's what you want to do. I invite you to stand and to sway. I invite you to accept your own healing. But the question that I ask you as we go into the song is, are you ready for your change? Because that's the affirmation that keeps coming up in this. I'm ready for my change. I'm ready for my change. Say it when you feel that you can truthfully, honestly say it to yourself and the spirit that we call God that is within you. time for me to let go of the shame the past behind me I see a new I'm ready for my change I'm ready for my change I forgive me. 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 I forgive
Thank you. I'll get into this lesson in a second, but you know, I have to give extra thanks to these two because they got together with me on Thursday night and you know, I don't read sheet music. I mean, I can look at it and get some basic ideas from it, but if you were to hand music to me and say, here, sing this, <laughs> good luck. Um, but um, I send something like that to Tal and Amy and Tal can just pluck it out, right? Except then I got there and I'm like, oh, did I mention that that is too high for me in the key that that video's in, right? <laughs> and, um, and so, and then we, I, I mean, Tal changed the key. I think we went through three key changes before we landed on the one. They were like, because it would be like, yeah, I can start where that video starts. I just can't do anything after that when it goes up, you know. And so, um, you know, yeah, it was just a, a lovely process of putting that together. I, I thought it was important because I think that that is the key lesson to healing is first forgiveness. And the first person we always have to work on the forgiveness of is ourselves. Because you can't give anything to anyone else that you don't have to give. So you've got to start by giving it to yourself. You can start by saying, I forgive myself for holding on to the emotion of this thing that I feel that I've been wronged by. You don't ever have to say in forgiveness, it turns out I was wrong for feeling that way. What they did was right. Right. In most cases, the fact that you had the emotional response that you had means that it wasn't right for you. And you don't get to healing by lying to yourself and saying, oh, yeah. And sometimes you may be like, oh, that was I was I had that response because of the perspective I was coming at it from them. When I became willing to see it from another position. I at least have an understanding. I still don't want them to do that or say that to me again. And I can now recognize it in a way I can shut that down quicker than maybe I did before. Right. But I forgive myself for letting that emotion and a negative one. I, I'm going to go on the assumption of right. Um, either mad, sad. Right. It's not happy or glad or there's not an awful. I forgive myself for laughing. Never do that laugh you can laugh in here even when i'm right like laughter is truly healing if you want to talk like you know there's actual studies that are like they recommend that if you're a hospital patient that you turn some comedy on as opposed to the drama um but it is about the forgiveness right it's about i i forgive me i forgive me for um, for the emotion that I had around that, letting it take over, not the emotion itself, because the emotion was one of my signals to let me know what's working for me and what's not. I forgive myself for how unkind I often am to me, right? How, how often have you said, I'm so stupid, why did I do that, right? Like, when you catch yourself doing that, say, no, I am not. I am one with God who is all knowing, who knows everything that there is to know. And I'm part of that, which means I have access to all knowledge. You cannot be stupid and have access to all knowledge. So I forgive myself for mistakenly saying something that is simply not true. And then you get to that place of saying, I'm ready for my change. I'm ready to not hold the anger for something. I'm ready to release the whatever that it, we all have our own stories for what that might be. Is this thing working out? Suddenly it felt like it wasn't. Um, and in that, now I'm ready for my change. Now I'm ready for that place, right? So. I'm debating in different directions. We've been looking at, at this book. Um, it's by Reverend Dr. Johnny Coleman. Uh, Johnny was the uh, second African-American woman to be ordained as a unity minister in, I think, 1955 or seven came uh, her ordination. Um, she was the first African-American student that was allowed to live on the grounds as a student at Unity Village. Um, and that's because 
um, her fellow students took a stand and said, we're all leaving if you don't allow her to live here, right? And, um, but Johnny in the early 1970s ended up breaking off and creating her own organization called the Universal Foundation for Better Living. Um, and from there she continued to teach the Fillmore Library is the way I usually call it. But all the exact same stuff that Unity Worldwide teaches and, and whatever titles they had, they weren't called Unity Worldwide then. Um, but one of the story, Johnny was also best friends with my mentor and my godmother, Della Reese. And so there's a story in here of, I think in 1979, uh, Della had just finished rehearsing the song that she was going to be singing that night uh, on The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. And as she's exiting the stage to go to her dressing room, she collapsed because she had a brain aneurysm. And, um, and Della has told this story many times and said that the moment that she knew something was off, she didn't know what was happening, but she knew something was off and she knew she was on her way to the floor. And in that moment, she just said, I don't know what's going on, Father, but I commit myself to you. Right, I'm handing this over. I'm gonna release the worry about it because I don't even know what to worry about. I'm handing it over and I'm trusting that you, God, are taking care of me in this moment. And then when she was in the hospital in Burbank, uh, the first doctor to come in to see her said, now, Miss Reese, we need to uh, let you know that 93% of the patients who have what has happened to you don't make it. And she said, okay, so tell me about those other 7%. And he said, but now this is serious. I need you to understand. She said, I need you to understand that I need to hear about the other 7%. And if you can't tell me about them, I need you to leave this room, right? And, um, and she got what she needed. But that story went on to be like, it, it turned out there were only two doctors that could help her, that were willing to help her maybe with what she had. And one was in Switzerland and one was in Canada. And they decided that the flight to Switzerland was too dangerous in the condition she was in. She had had, most people drop dead from aneurysms, right? And so she went to Canada and it turned out the clip I think is, is the correct term that they needed, had just been created in Osaka, Japan, and was flown overnight to Canada and put into her. And she lived from 1979 until 2017 from something she was told she couldn't live through, right? So it's about having that mindset. My father, when I was 10 years old, had um, a massive heart attack the night that my mother had had a hysterectomy that morning. And so, and these were in the days when, this was probably around 1979 to 1980 maybe. Um, these are the, you know, now I think you have a hysterectomy in your home that night probably. I, I don't, you know, they send you home quick. But you know, she was gonna be in the hospital for days and, and my dad had a massive heart attack. Now. One of his brothers had already died from a massive heart attack. Another of his brothers died from a, a heart attack uh, like three or four months after my dad had his, right? Years later, they did a study. They pulled the record, medical records, and they looked at the three of them. They said all three brothers had had identical heart attacks, and my dad lived through it. Now, I'm not claiming anything about what my uncles were saying about my cousins, um, but I, what I can tell you is about my dad's mindset in that moment, right? When he said, uh, I can't go anywhere. I cannot leave Judy. That's my mom. I can't leave Judy with those kids in that business on her own. I cannot go anywhere. I am not going anywhere. And he lived for another 18 years after the heart attack that supposedly was supposed to take him out, right? So that's not to say that the person and we all probably know at least one story of the person that was walking across a room or walking across the street and dropped dead, right? I had a friend from childhood whose mom was, uh, they were cutting some limbs down, she and her boyfriend at the time, 
And he looked down and suddenly she's laying on the ground. Well, he thought he had dropped a limb that had hit her. She had a massive heart attack, just dropped dead right there in the moment. It's not to say that, that there's something wrong that happened. Oh, well, they didn't have the right thoughts. So, you know, God took them out because they didn't think the right thing. So they had to be punished. Yeah, right, yeah, right, right. So it's not, it's sometimes the exit is the healing, right? Sometimes the exit is the healing. I learned this new thought lesson from my dad before I ever knew what new thought was. And I promise you, he did not know what new thought was um, and would have used other terms similar to woo woo, right? If described to him, but um, his may have had some cuss words in it, but um, it would have definitely. Um, but in all these years, my dad kept uh, reaching beyond, right? When he had um, a triple bypass surgery, he had two other doctors that said, no, we can't do that surgery because you won't live through it. And then he has this surgeon that says, all right, we're prepping you. We're going to do the surgery tomorrow morning. And he said, so you disagree with those other doctors? He said, oh, no, they're totally right. Your chances of surviving this are really small. But, but your chances of living at all if you don't have it is zero. And so he, that, so he got that surgery when I was a senior in high school, and he lived until I was 28. And when he died, two weeks before he died, one evening after all the visitors had gone home and it was just he and my mom, he said, it's time. I'm done fighting. It's time to go. And two weeks later, he was out. Well, he then gave her the full full breakdown of how his funeral should go, including the four ministers who were meant to speak. Um, it was an event. Um, but like it happened in that way. I'm convinced that when Della made her transition, she had been at the hospital. Her husband had had a stroke and there was something else medically going on. And I believe that she saw him and thought he was on his way out. And she was already having some serious medical conditions. And I think she decided to go ahead and get over first. And he's still alive, but she's still prepping. So, and she speaks to me constantly. But, so it's not to say, when we're talking about healing, it's not to say, oh, well, if you didn't suddenly turn around and, and become able to run a marathon, you did it wrong. Like, it, it's about finding peace of mind. That's what we, spiritually we can do. Now, if you, if you want to work with the physical change, spiritually and your mind change, I believe will help that. And then you should still go see whatever doctors specialize in whatever it is you're looking for. I've told the story many times that when I started out losing weight and changing my diet because I had been diagnosed with diabetes that I said, I'm hiking because uh, I'm walking to stay off that needle. Well, that's not a good affirmation because my attention's off of what I don't want instead of what I do want, right? And that's when, when Della said to me one night, I need you to know that if a time comes that you need a needle, that God is in the needle and God is in the medicine and God is in the people that created those things and God is in you, right? So like, it's wonderful to not you know, attach yourself to stuff that you don't want to be attached to, but never think that you have failed in those moments, right? So, um, let me read to you. There's this book that I want to do some kind, either a book study or a class next year on Myrtle Fillmore's Healing Letters. And, um, oh, this is going to be interesting. Okay. So here's in a chapter called Drawing on the Source. And these are all, Myrtle didn't write this book, sit down and write this book. This is a compilation of letters that she would write to people who were writing in asking for healing, help, and her prayers on it. And in this chapter on Drawing on the Source, she said, instead of thinking about his apparent condition of the race thought with which he may have been struggling or his age, he is to concentrate his attention upon God that he may become so aware of God's presence and God's perfect pattern of life and God's qualities that he will, that he will forget old errors and dissolve the conditions that he has built up from the dependence on something or someone outside himself. It's about turning and, re and relieving yourself 
of the worry because as Johnny points out in this book, if you're worrying, you're not using your God mind in that moment because God's not worried about it, right? So it's fine to acknowledge that you're concerned about something, but it won't serve you well to sit on that. You know, there's a saying, um, you can't get poor enough to fix somebody else's financial challenges, to make them rich, right? You can't get sick enough to make someone else well. In fact, if you think about it, if, if you get sick and somebody else is sick and y'all are hanging out sick, don't we tend to think that you're probably contagious and we should stay away, right? Because, <laughs> all right, you know, so it's like, it's in, like how many of you are running out uh, to go sit with somebody who's been told they're COVID positive today? Are we, I, I, as I thought of that example, I remember one Christmas, I have a lot of cousins. I'm the 18th uh, grandchild on my dad's side. And I remember one year at a Christmas gathering, uh, one of the cousins hadn't brought their child because the child had chicken pox. And as we were leaving lunch that day, all the cousins who had kids around the age of that child left to go take their kids to play with that kid so that they could get chicken pox out of the way over the Christmas holiday when they were already off. <laughs> but, but again, that was about a healing thing. It's like, and certainly, in, in many times, I think that, you know, you can just get a vaccine for it now. But there was a time that, you know, if you hadn't gotten chicken pox, the earlier in life you could get it and get past it was believed to be the best way. So they're like, let me get my kids over here to play with the sick kid, right? So, um, I just want to cover in these, these chapters, if you have not looked at this book, I promise, look, it's short. It's really short, this book that we, we've studied. I cannot recommend it enough. Let me flip that around to say I highly, highly recommend this book. This little, short, simple book is powerful in helping you find wellness within yourself, regardless of what condition may be going on within you or around you. The chapters of this basically give you what that formula is. Health is your birthright. Like you gotta know that you know that. I'm, health is my birthright. I don't have to earn it, it's my birthright. The faith factor, I have to use my faith in that because often in times if I'm calling upon healing, it means I need to believe something before I have proof of its existence. I need to use the power of faith that I have within me. The thought connection, how I think about this will matter. My thoughts create my experience. There is no hiding place, meaning you can't lie to yourself. You can't, don't, you know, saying affirmations to help you get your mind shifted is really important. But they're not magic formulas. You can't just say the words and say, well, Wally said words create things, so there you go. Yes, but your feelings are what really creates things and your feel like your feelings behind the words. You can't lie to God because God is one with you and already knows what you truly are thinking and feeling. And we have free will. So we get to create that experience for ourselves. And lastly, let go, let God. And that's going back into the faith of it, of being like right here in this moment, I'm calling upon my full health. I am whole, perfect and complete. I am whole, perfect, and complete, even if I'm in a hospital hooked up to a bunch of machines, because my spirit that is eternal, that always has been, is now, always will be, is whole, perfect, and complete. And that is the foundation of who I am. And that is the heart of healing. That is calling upon the change. That is saying, I'm ready for my change. And I don't think in those moments when you're ready to pray for healing, that it's that hard to get to the place of acknowledging, I would like a change here. I'm ready for my change, and I'm recognizing that it has to start with how I'm responding to it, what my thoughts and feelings about it is. That's what we have control over, and that's what comes in from our heart energy out into our experience. I love you. I bless you. I behold the Christ that absolutely is you. And thank you for being here today. So I'm here to remind you that you can give 
to Unity in Greensboro through our website, through Venmo, Facebook, and text, or in person. Your do donations support our minister, musicians, sound people, youth programs, support staff, office supplies, and our search for a new home. If you are spiritually fed here, if you feel safe, if you feel accepted, if you feel inspired here, I hope you will feel led to support this teaching so the seeds of this teaching will grow in our community. This teaching dares to imagine a world where each of us love ourselves for real, where we love our, each other for real. Thank you. All right, as the, uh, the gifts are coming up and around, join us in song, and this is our prayer. As we say thank you, let's do the whole song because right. I want everybody to join in and feel it. Allow these words to come from your heart. Thank you, God, for everything. 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 Thank you. 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 let us affirm unity in Greensboro is abundantly blessed creative people are drawn to us divine ideas flow through us financial resources bless us and we accomplish mighty works together all right so I'm gonna flip one thing in the script so thank you um, since I wanted to sing the whole song and I talked a little long and I want to make sure we're not doing music after 11 o'clock. I'm going to invite Tal and Amy to sing their song first. And then Charlotte is going to make an announcement. And then Maria will do the rest. Never failed, and you won't 
Music today has been wonderful, yes? Yeah. Thank you. So Wally only gave me a minute. Yes. Here, or less. Or, no, not less. So here are the three things I want to be sure that I have communicated. First of all, I want to address our online viewers. We would love to see you here in person for both our Wednesday and Thursday activities. We hope you can join us Wednesday in the park for the healing service and back here for the streaming service. And Thursday for our potluck and the wonderful activities that we have planned. So for y'all here, you should have this flyer in your um, brochure. And if bulletin, and if not, there's some extras back there on the table. So the, it's got the details on it. Secondly, for, uh, to those here and online, we still have seven sign-up slots that need to be taken if we are to fulfill our commitment to be in prayer for our world for 24 hours. So please take time after the service today to sign up online or on the sheet that's on the back table and leave one for me. Usually I get the one that nobody else wants between 3 and 4 o'clock in the morning, but that's okay. I'm good. And thirdly, uh, we've invited the Presbyterian Church of the Covenant members uh, for our services and our pot, pot luck. So we want to make sure that we have enough food for them. So if you've not yet signed up to bring a dish, please do so. The sign-up sheet's on the back table, too. And that's all, so thanks and blessings, and see you Wednesday and Thursday.
So if you're a first time visitor, I know our ushers have already taken care of you and given you a little welcome packet. Uh, I'm going to invite you to fill out the um, communication card so that we can stay in touch with you, keep you posted of the upcoming events that some of which uh, Charlotte has already mentioned and uh, so we can stay in touch with you. Charlotte's already gone through the World Day of Prayer. Uh, the family of Jim Sukup invites you to join us in celebrating his life this Friday, September 15th at 4.30 p.m. We'll have a service in the sanctuary and then enjoy some wine and cheese here in the Fellowship Hall afterwards. Jim Sukup, in honor of Jim Sukup. Oh, next, fr this coming Friday the 15th. Friday the 15th. Um, and we're also putting together a unity choir to sing for his service. You know, Jim was a huge supporter of the music here and a wonderful addition when we actually had a choir to the choir. Uh, he had an amazing voice. Um, so we'd like to lift him up with music that resonated deeply for him. Um, if you are willing to sing, see Anita or Linda after the service today. Uh, there will be a brief, brief youth and family meeting next Sunday, September 17th, following the service. Families are strongly encouraged to attend to find out about fall youth events, update their information, and more. Letting Go, Meditation with Candy Bartling Connor, Wednesday, not this Wednesday, the following Wednesday, September 20th at 6.30 p.m. via Zoom only. Fingers aren't working. Page two. So many great events happening. Um, letting go can be a challenge. Give yourself a quiet space and a willingness to try. Spirit will do the rest. And then we have Game on Greensboro, a board game themed fundraiser for our youth. This is going to be held Saturday, September 23rd. Um, from noon to 6 p.m. Tickets are on sale now. Get your tickets. Vendors, sponsors, and volunteers are needed. Please go to GameOnGreensboro.com to sign up and for additional information. We invite you to let the chaplains pray with you. We have Wally, Charlotte, and Anita here today um, because Charlotte has the shawl. She'll be standing at the back today um, as a extra invitation for you to join her and go ha have a little private time across the hall if that's needed. Um, Nana is always here to lay her healing hands on if you have something special going on within that um, needs a little extra special touch. See Nana as well. And we've already had the music, so I guess Wally's back up. I'm back up. Uh, I will say about Game on Greensboro as well, like when they say that sponsorships are needed, like if you can think of, of any sponsors, like any businesses, like Miranda has it set so that they can do a, 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 a very small donation or, or they can like sponsor an entire room. Uh, she's also set it up so that we can all uh, sponsor a chair. I think that's like 10 or $15 and like your name will go on 10, it's $10. So you can sponsor a few chairs and your name will actually be on the chair so the intent of the of Miranda and the youth is to let this raise the money that they need for all the activities they want to do next year so then like they're set and they're they're planning ahead of time so you know let us um, support that um, all right so this is the big week I do hope you'll join us we're doing that Wednesday night the first activity out at the park so that you can invite people who may be church averse Right, so we're, we're releasing the walls of the church. This is meant, it's a healing prayer service, whether you're healing a physical condition, an emotional condition, a financial condition, just something that you wanna change in your life and you wanna call on that change. Please do join us. If for some reason it is raining, uh, then we will be here in this room. It's a four minute drive. I don't have the address, but it's on the flyer and all that. It's Lake Daniel single. Now, I kept typing in Lake Daniels, but Lake Daniel Park is a four minute drive from here. So I do hope you'll join us for, for all that activity. And uh, the songs we're gonna sing at Jim's service is um, 
I, I let go, I release and let go and love is my decision. So, um, you, you don't have to be a solo singer to join us in that, you know, so help join. And if you're going to participate, we invite you to bring a hat to wear while singing in the choir. Cause Jim loved for people to put wacky hats on at parties, um, at his house. So, um, okay. So, um, when, are we, when did we land on for that? Are we, are we trying for Friday at five or are we, I mean, not for, for Wednesday at five, or are we just going to do it before the service? Wednesday at five o'clock, um, and probably in the sanctuary, but I've not paid to reserve the sanctuary. So if it's not open, then we'll come to another piano. Um, okay. I think, I think that's it. I think I get to let y'all go now. Um, Next, next Sunday will be a, a fun service I'm looking forward to talking about in uh, preparing for a storm. It seemed like a good topic for the, the time of year where we always hear about hurricanes and all that stuff. So, uh, and Tanya Ross will be here next Sunday as well. So um, what, what time is it? Yeah, it's at, but I think we can do this quietly. Can you just... Um, the uh, uh, song you sang in the chorus of it, the grateful, just if we can just repeat softly, softly on purpose, not just because we don't want to echo down the hallway, but I, I think it adds intent to it. If we just sing, and, I, and I'll put the microphone away for it, just the grateful, grateful, uh, truly grateful I am. We need keys on. Grateful, grateful, truly grateful I am. Just that. Grateful, grateful, truly blessed and do. Now we can affirm together. If you'd like to stand, hold hands if you'd like. If you'd rather not hold hands, you can just place your hands prayerfully in the air and let us repeat together. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us and the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, love is, peace is, light is, God is, and all is well. Under services going on down the hallway, so if we can be quiet in this hallway, thanks.